What is up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to the uh, webinar. I'm going to put everybody in uh, right away in screen share mode here. Let me go ahead and share that and then um, change that and then do that. Hopefully, you can see my screen. This is my cheap cover up here. Uh, so you don't see the whole thing, but today the training is going to be pretty, uh, well, it's, it's pretty interesting because as an agent, you all are going to be going through this, every single one of you. And so let's kind of recap where we are. If you've been uh, on these webinars, you know that we've been going through uh, the sales process, which has been a long, um, really important, when I say long, I mean, there's a lot to it, but it's been a really important uh uh, thing that you as a real estate agent and broker need to have uh, as a tool. Uh, those that have it are going to sell more. They're going to make more money. Those that don't, won't. Uh, it's just that simple. And uh, so I know everybody on this webinar is, is uh, excited about that and excited in using that. But sooner or later, you got to convert. And so part of your conversion, at least on the listing side, is to... Um, uh, think about the listing appointment. And let me kind of paint the picture here of what this means. This this little statement right here, if you can see my, my screen here, let me just make sure. Yeah, uh, it looks like you can all see that. Cool. So uh, this little section, if you can see my cursor moving right here, list to last. That's for me anyway. Let me do this. Look at this. Boom. And then we'll go, boom. There's probably a better way to do this, I know. But it, it works for now. So list the last. That means if you want to get to something called uh, Basecamp, which I'm going to be kind of rolling out to what that means. Basecamp is uh, putting yourself in a position where you are getting six to eight closings a month, either on the buy side or the sell side, uh, or maybe even on uh, helping a renter uh, side. But if you want to get to base camp and you want to have six to eight closings a month, for most people, that is well more than what the average agent is doing, number one. And number two, um, this is the thing that's going to give you constant income. And uh, But you got to put all of these things in place. It starts with those sales uh, skills that we talked about. And it, and it really kind of has, this is where it gets granular. And this is the listing presentation. Now, when you have a listing presentation with um, a homeowner, one of the interesting things that I feel is um, uh, important is uh, covering the five steps of a listing uh, presentation. What does that mean? Well, that means that part of that, for instance, you're going to have your intro. Part of that is you're going to have like a little bit of education period. You're eventually going to get to the close where you're clamping down. And this is where it kind of segues from your sales skills to actually putting pen to paper and getting that done. So that's what I wanted to cover today. I'm going to give you a little bit of fun homework to do as well. Uh, this is uh, the five bullet points of, of what a listing presentation is. Uh, there's, there's several ways that you can do a listing presentation. You can do it in person. You can do it online, like a Zoom call like we're doing right now. Um, that may be important, especially if, uh, you know, we, we, you know, this, this, uh, uh pandemic continues, which hopefully it doesn't looks like we're going to get out of the woods here, at least on this first phase, if there is a second phase. Uh, but you know, you might want to just do that to save on time, depending on the rapport and trust that you have with the prospect, a zoom call could be great with this. This could also be something in some cases that you send to them as a PowerPoint uh, or keynote presentation. Uh, and so I wanted to cover this. There's five sections. So let's get into that. The traditional way that we cover, or a lot of people call these five sections is right here, if you can see this. The introduction, the education, the soft close, the presentation of price and fees, and the close. I think that's a little bit boring. I think we can tighten that up a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do uh, here with you guys is tighten that up. Uh, let's move 
that screen up a little bit. So the first part here, see my cover up, it's not working the best here. It's not bad. We're gonna improve on this, I promise you. Um, but the first part is the intro. So I like to call it, instead of the intro, let's call it the initiation. This should really last about one to two minutes. Now, remember I said earlier, this can actually happen in person. It can happen online, uh, like a Zoom call right here. Or you can actually do this by sending a PowerPoint. I wouldn't, rec that would uh, be something that you would do um, uh, not a lot. You know, that's going to be more rare than anything. Uh, I would always suggest either the best thing is to be live with a person uh, so that you can use all of those sales skills, body posture, tonality, uh, things like that. Um, uh, and then I would uh, think about doing a Zoom call next. That might be your next most popular way to do a listing presentation. And then the third way is just kind of sending out a PowerPoint. Again, I don't recommend that. Uh, as your go-to, but you may have to do it once in a while. So the first phase of that is a real short thing. It's called your initiation. And um, uh, in your initiation, you're going to do a couple things here. Just like we say um, with some of our sales skills uh, training, you want to build some curiosity there. So if I took this, and let's see if I can, you guys know what's coming next. Let me see if I can like increase this font a little bit. There we go. That's a lot better. Um, boom, a lot better. So in building curiosity, this first part right here that I'm highlighting, boom, highlighting, build curiosity. Before we get uh, going with curiosity, let me um, uh, kind of state to you, just like I've written here, there's nothing held back. In the most expensive the most expensive agent that you can hire, this is a theory that I'm going to give you. Um, there's a mentality behind this. So before um, you are uh, going into all of your detail about enlightenment and education and your closing and things like this, we're going to build curiosity by telling them that you are the most expensive agent you can hire. And let me explain by this. And I'm just going to, I'll, I'll uh, ad lib it here a little bit, but I'll read uh, the script. This is really a script that you're, you guys are all going to have. It's going to be in the in uh, the blueprint, AB blueprint. So you all have this, but uh, you might want to say something like this. Hey, before we get started, let me just mention, um, and this is where the theory comes in. Let me just mention, so there's nothing held back. I'm being totally transparent. I'm going to be the most expensive agent you can hire to sell your home. And notice again, what I'm doing with um, my uh, body as I'm, you know, you're not here in the room, but you guys all see this. Uh, I'm going to be the most expensive agent that you can hire to sell your home. Mentally, they already know that you're more than 5% and really now they're curious. That's the whole mission of this theory. Now, while you, um, uh, that may sound different to you or different than what you've heard before from other real estate agents, I assure you that my results are as different as that sounds to you. And so, again, you're building on that curiosity. When you tell somebody right off the bat that you're the most expensive agent that they can hire, they're like, okay, how are you the most expensive agent? Tell me more. So I will show you how that will actually work out to your benefit and how at the end of the day, you'll be able to net more for your house when the smoke clears. Good? Or another way to end that is uh, I will be able to net more for you when the smoke clears. Interested? Or depending, again, on your rapport and depending how long you are involved in this sales presentation would be uh, dictate how you end that sentence. So let me just start from the beginning. So this is crystal clear to you. This is a theory. Uh, this is uh, called, um, uh, you know, before I get started, I'm the most expensive agent theory. Okay. And so let me just kind of rephrase that. Hey, before we get started here, Tom, I just want to let you know that uh, I want to be fully transparent. I'm going to be the most expensive agent uh, out of anybody that you may have talked to to sell your home. Um, you know, again, time out here. Mentally, what we're doing is building curiosity. They're going to want to know why. Okay, so let me continue. Now, while that may sound different uh, than what you may have heard from other agents, see what you're doing there, time out here, is separating yourself from everybody else, all of the other competition. 
But I'll ass- I assure you that my results are as different as that sounds to you. So I'm going to show you how that's actually going to work out to your benefit and how at the end of the day, you're going to be able to net more uh, for your house when the smoke clears. Cool? So uh, again, how you're going to end that good, cool, interested is going to depend on your rapport with your prospect. Um, I tend to be very casual in my approach. So, you know, I'm usually cool uh, or good uh, type thing. Um, But use your own there. Again, I'll just go through this real quickly. This is your initiation. Hey, before we get started, Mary and Tom, I just want to kind of share with you a couple things. I'm going to be the most expensive agent that you could work with out of maybe anybody else that you've talked to. Um, And I just want to be fully transparent with that. Um, And the reason I'm telling you that is I'm going to show you, uh, number one, how that does sound probably different to you right now. And, um, but I'm going to show you how that's going to actually work out to your benefit, number one. And number two, at the end of the day, when all the smoke clears, you're probably, because of that fact, going to be able to net more for your house. Interested or cool? Uh, so I, I really think, um, you know, the traditional way of doing an intro for most agents is, uh, talking about how long you've been in the business, how many houses you've sold. Uh, things like that. That's pretty much, that's an old school way of selling. Um, And it may work for some, but I think in this environment today with the fully transparent uh, internet and the way that uh, people communicate today and tech, the world of tech, um, you know, that's not the best way to start this initiation. The best way is to build curiosity have them lean in. Why are they, why is this guy or why is this woman the most expensive agent that we can hire? Um, You know, there's a lot of uh, agents out there that are now discounting and cutting their points and things like that, uh, or cutting what they're charging as far as commission. Um, And I think a good way to separate yourself as an agent in today's market is to go the other route, go the exact other way and say, hey, I'm going to be the most expensive agent that you're hiring. Immediately, they're going to know they're not at 5%. Immediately, they're going to know also that you're different than everybody else that's come through that door if they've made a presentation like that. Uh, So that's the first phase. That should last one to two minutes at the most. You kind of see what I just said there. Use your own approach, but kind of use that as a guideline. This will be a script in AD Blueprint, by the way, so don't worry about getting all of this down right now. Uh, number two, um, you're, you, they, some people call this education. I'd like to call it uh, enlightenment. And what do I mean by enlightenment? Well, number one, I think that you're enlightening your prospect about what's going on um, with the market, what's going on specifically with houses in their specific neighborhood and how you're going to target market that perfect buyer. Um, we're uh, From this phase, we're going to be going into a lot of training with regard to leads, more lead training. And uh, one of them is getting buyers, specifically targeted buyers, to buy the homes that you're going to list. So um, again, I want you to think of this phase, the enlightenment phase, as probably the meat of your presentation or the biggest portion of your presentation. This might last anywhere from 18 to 20 minutes, 24 minutes, something like that. Um, and I'm going to tell you something that might sound counteractive than, to, than what you've heard before. Uh, and that is this. Uh, do not bring out all of these comparable sales right away. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of analogy here. The reason I say don't bring out comparable sales right when you have a listing agreement is when the doctor gives you, when you go to the doctor, by the way, and we've talked about this before in other trainings, the doctor has earned the right to give you, to ask you questions, number one, and for you to give them straight answers. But they've earned the right to ask you questions because of their training, their certificates on the wall, their experience. And then they're going to go through that interview process and then they're going to give you their um, uh, diagnosis or their analysis. And they're going to give you a solution, hopefully, by way of treatment, prescription, uh, whatever, prophylactic, and all of those things, right? So you want to kind of act as a doctor would act. And in understanding how a doctor would act, uh, what I like 
about this approach is you're not a doctor doesn't come out and say, listen, uh, the other the seven other doctors in this town uh, are going to give you this treatment. And this is why they don't necessarily do that. You're relying on that doctor because they are the expert. That's why, again, I talk to everybody about being the market expert in their market. You know, that's why I hark on and everybody on videos and putting videos out there. You know, I see uh, uh, the last couple of videos from from Dina um, have been fantastic. And of course, you guys know Heather does videos. And I really think it positions you as a market expert and you get exposure. There was a video that Heather did uh, a week ago and she got over a thousand views. That's the cheapest way to get exposure. Uh, as long as the video is good. Uh, the cheapest way to get exposure to yourself is video and it holds the attention the best. Um, you know, blogs don't work anymore. Uh, they're not holding attention. Email marketing is really kind of falling by the wayside. So you got to hold their attention. And just like you would, uh, if you're a patient in a doctor's office, you're going to hold their attention by acting like a doctor. So immediately don't pull out the comparable sales. When the doctor gives you a plan, they do not give you comparisons, okay? Um, when uh, they will immediately try, if you do that, by the way, the, the prospective client is going to immediately try to uh, argue with you as to why their home is worth more uh, right here. And give price like a doctor's advice. Your home is worth four fifty. Be direct. Be the doctor. Like I got highlighted there. When you pull out comparable sales, they're going to want to argue. You're not necessarily wanting to do that in this presentation. You want to be the doctor. Be direct. Uh, and in this market where the prospect, the consumer, really knows and understands um, – uh, the market may be as good as you, uh, definitely better than most real estate agents uh, because of Zillow and Trulia and just the market information. I'm not saying that that information is absolutely accurate. And that's why, again, um, I don't think you want to open that can of worms. Be the doctor here and give your uh, uh, advice and be direct and tell them at this point what they're going to do. Um, I was selling, you know, I was, uh, I've been in sales for a long time and I, and I, um, uh, am in, uh, real estate education, for instance, on those sales. And we would go to different markets across the country. And when we would give a presentation to people, I noticed that in the sales process, sometimes people like to be told what to do. This is uh, especially true if you've got uh, a prospect that has a military background, for instance, they're trained in that manner. Most uh, people that are looking to get advice on what to do when they sell their house is they're looking for advice. They're looking to be told, this is what we're going to do. I got this. I've done a thousand of these listings and I've sold a thousand of these houses. I, I got this. That's the way that you want to go in. If you go in like, hey, here's our comps. You know, what do you think we should list the house at? Uh, you're not going to be near as effective. So. The enlightenment plan, the second phase of your listing presentation is, is going to be really important. And this is the meat of that presentation. Again, uh, you're going to probably uh, do this in many different uh, fashions. This could be a conversation at a restaurant or a, um, um, uh, a, another meeting or maybe even at uh, a family outing. Uh, but this is going to be the meat of your presentation. Or this is going to be something where it's more um, organized in the sales process. We're actually at their house giving them this presentation. It could be over their dining room table, that type of thing. The third phase is going to go uh, be a short phase, going to be one to two minutes. And basically what this is is something called, a lot of people call it the soft close. I'd like to call it the elastic close. And so uh, the reason that I like to call it the elastic close is because of the same reason that stretchy jeans are so in, uh, uh, popular today. You know, stretchy jeans uh, where they expand and contract based on what your maybe your eating habits are doing over the last couple of months, things like that. But the reason that the elastic close is so important is because it allows you to expand and contract based on what your prospect is giving you as far as information. 
So this is before the commission and price um, conversation. Before you get there, you want to say something like um, something like this, like I put down here. Again, this is the script. Uh, yes, you're the right agent, uh, provided we can agree on price and commission. I actually wrote that wrong. Uh, so basically what you want to do is ask a question as a soft close or an elastic close. And it would go something like this. I'll change this, but it would go something like this. Hey, Tom and Mary, let me ask you something. If you think that I'm the right agent, even though we haven't really talked about price and commission, assuming that we can agree on something, is this something that um, you know, we could, we could uh, sign the listing agreement tonight and we can put up uh, on the market tomorrow and start having people look at the property. That would be an example of a soft close. What you're trying to do is gauge and take a temperature of where your prospect is in this process. Um, the reason that we call this the elastic close is because they could say yes, no, maybe at that case. If it's yes, then you know that you're going to go right on to the uh, next phase, which is the price and commission. And then after that, you're going to go right to the close, lock it up. You should have the documentation there or the ability to send it right from your computer so that they can e-sign. Um, if they say no, you know you've got to go back up into the sales process uh, and go through some of our objection and condition training. Um, if they're giving you an objection, like we talked about last week, make sure they're not giving you a smoke screen. Make it sure that it's the real objection, and then you know what to do with that. You want to isolate it and then uh, go through that, that process. There's also a five-step process with uh, objections that you go through. But once you have it isolated and you go through and you make sure that's the right objection and you handle that objection, then you're going to go back to this elastic close again. Hey, okay, so that's great. We got that issue hammered out. Let me just say, uh, ask you a question here, real quick. You know, assuming that I'm the right agent and it looks like I am, that there, we're this far in the the uh, meeting and this far in the detail. Um, assuming that you're going to be agreeable to the uh, uh, commission that we're going to be talking about next, um, is this something that we would sign tonight? And be real direct by that. Again, be the doctor here. Be the elastic close. Again, you're going to get, get a yes, no, maybe. If it's yes, you move on to price and uh, fees, which I like to call investment and commission. And then you go on to the close. If it's no, obviously you go back, handle that objection. If it's maybe and they're on the fence, um, again, this is probably a smoke screen. It's probably not an objection. Uh, it's probably not a condition. It might be. It could be, I guess. But you've got to identify that smoke screen, condition, or um, uh, objection. It's probably not an objection. So let's go to what it, it might be. So let's say it is a uh, condition. Well, uh, John, I really didn't want to list my house until I painted the kitchen. That's not an objection. That's a condition. So uh, uh, we talked about how to handle those. Great. I totally agree with you. Remember, you're going to agree with every objection and condition. I totally agree with you. I, I see how you might think the kitchen could need some updated painting. Listen, if you got, do you have the color picked out? Because I can get my painter over here this week and we can get this thing done. As a matter of fact, that wouldn't stop us. Uh, just if that's, you know, is that it? That's the only thing that you're looking at, uh, Mary and Tom? Yeah, that's it. If we can get this kitchen painted, we would you know, we would move forward. Great. Let me help you with that. Let me, let me help you handle that. I've done this a thousand times. So again, that's how you're going to handle that. That is going to be uh, possibly a condition. A smoke screen is something where it's, it's not the right uh, objection. It's not the true objection. They're just kind of putting you off. So you, you need to identify that. So after you get done with that, notice this is just one to two minutes at the most. This is the meat here, 18 to 24 minutes. Let me re-highlight that, 18 to 24 minutes. And this one here, the initiation is one to two minutes. And then finally, uh, the uh, in investment and condition. Notice that a lot of people call this price and fees, investment and commission. Or you might just want to call this what you know commission structure. Hey, let me tell you why, why I am the most expensive. Um, you may have had some people come in here for less, but I'm going to list your property for, um, for 7%. 
and this is why. Or, or, and some of you might be saying, well, 7% is not really, um, that's not really happening in my market. That never happens to me. Great. Then you remember this training? Hold on. Let me see if I have this here. I don't have that here. But do you remember last week's training where I talked about the option close um, and giving them options? Let me see if I have this here. Hold on. This might be, this would be great if I could pull this up. I should have this better organized. And I do. It's kind of like that mad scientist organization. I got it here. Um, seventh, eighth, boom, right here. You remember this, the menu of services? Do you guys remember that? That is where uh, I think a lot of you, and this will be on AB Blueprint, so you don't have to worry about this either. But this is where... Um, the options come in. So you could have silver, gold, platinum, and then change your services. This could be 5%. This could be 6%. This could be 7%. Uh, you could tie it to price point. Hey, if I get to between 98 and 100% of the asking price, the list price, I'm at 7%. Or, you know, that type of thing. You could structure it that way as well. But notice this. In a published, and I said this the last few uh, weeks here, in a published study, uh, of consumer research, a researcher found that the number of product options uh, had a big influence. One of Daniel's most famous experiments was based on consumers who were asked to purchase a DVD player. When a single DVD player was shown, only 10% purchased. However, when Daniel introduced a second DVD player, the number of sales increased by 66%. Your buyers are more likely to make a purchase if they feel confident about their decision. This is a way that you can do that, is by giving them uh, options when you are listing. Five, six, and seven. Um, good, better, best is another way to say that. So we'll talk about that more if you guys are in involved in a listing right now and you've got any questions, I'm always here. I will always help you uh, kind of structure this. And then the last part is the close, um, you know, asking for the sale. Most people, uh, as we've talked before, most people never get to that point. Um, hey, and it could be as simple as, hey, let's do this. I've got a listing agreement right here. Or you can have your computer in front of you and say, hey, if you can get out your computer, I'm going to email you right now and you can eat uh, e-sign, DocuSign, or um, uh, Form Simplicity, wh uh, whatever technology you're using, you can send them the um, listing agreement and they can sign right there. And so most agents never really get to the close and understand how to get to the close. So that is an important step for all of you. So this is the five... Um, Phases of a listing presentation, initiation, enlightenment, elastic close, commission, and, and close. And so uh, that's it. You, this is going to take practice a little bit, but what I thought would be cool is uh, for everyone on the call, I'm going to send you a blank PowerPoint that's a listing presentation. And your homework is to... Uh, do a listing presentation for the most expensive house in your market. Uh, again, if you haven't done a listing presentation, you should. Um, but do some do this for the most expensive house in your market. I'm going to send you a blank presentation. And think about that blank presentation with these five steps. Uh, in, initiation, enlightenment, elastic close, uh, commission, and close. And um, do this homework. This is a great way to uh, practice. This is, like I said, if you don't practice and you're in this situation, you, you, you know, you, you may not be as effective. So I want to help you with that. So I'm going to send everybody uh, later today after the call a, um, an email that has a blank PowerPoint presentation. You can convert it over to... to um, uh, over to Keynote uh, if you want to, if you're an Apple person. And uh, your homework is to put a listing presentation together uh, for the most expensive house in your neighborhood. Don't spend a ton of time on this. Uh, the real um, meat of the lesson is to kind of go through this process of intro, uh, sorry, initiation, enlightenment, 
um, elastic close, uh, it, uh, what the commission is, and the close. That's the real meat of this. So don't spend a ton of time on it, but fill this out. Put your presentation together. It could be five, six, eight slides at the most, um, but go through this. Practice this. Um, run through a couple times. Send it to me. And let me know uh, if you want to record this. You certainly could. Or, uh, you could record your presentation, send it to me. I'll help you get better with this. I really will. I'll help you get better. Other than that, that is uh, it. I just wanted to uh, la uh, end with a couple things here. Um, you can't get a million leads a day, but if you know how to convert your leads, that's it. You're done. You just wasted time. And money conversion is the key. The sales process that we've gone through and understanding uh, the different things on like how to handle an objection. What's a smoke screen? Uh, is it a conditioner objection? And getting them to the close on this listing presentation is going to help you make more money as an agent for sure. Uh, and it's going to get you to the point uh, that we are going to start calling uh, base camp. Basecamp is where you have, on average, six to eight closings a month. Think about that in your market. Uh, the first Basecamp, there may be you know, a second level Basecamp, third level Basecamp, but think about that in your market. If you had six to eight closings in your market, the average house was, uh, let's call it uh, 300 grand. You guys get uh, the, almost all of your commission, call it 3%. Uh, so that's nine grand. Uh, times six, we'll go on the low end, uh, you can start to see those numbers add up. So, uh, you know, getting to base camp is kind of our mission here. And um, just put that into consideration. If it took you six months or 12 months to build your business to get six to eight closings a month, would that be worth it to you? This is the activity that you need to do or that you, you should want to do. And um, so I'll send everybody out a blank PowerPoint presentation. Uh, go through it. Send it to me. I'd love to see it. Uh, get some practice in. And we'll go from there. That is our call for the week. Uh, we kept it shorter this week than we did the last couple. I know you're all swamped with uh, real estate and life. Uh, but remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. Success has everything to do with failure. And life is as simple as you make it. We will see everybody on the next webinar. Thanks, everybody.